You know, sometimes we're listening to uh, certain things, certain information, certain programs, even sometimes when we're, uh, you know, reading the Word of God. We need to be attentive to the Spirit of God and find out what God is giving us through this. Amen. What God is giving us through this. Hallelujah. Sometimes we're listening and listening and listening to uh, different preachings and different uh, programs and different this and different, different that. And, you know, we just receive information. Just pure information. And it's information after information. But there's a time when God breaks through and He brings somebody on television, on radio, or on your path with a mandate to touch your life, to give you a miracle. Do you understand that? Not because He wants to show something, but because He loves us. So whatever we're listening, whoever we're listening, whatever we're watching, whatever we do, we need to recognize what God is doing through this. Amen. Is it a broad life or way or it's a narrow path that God is trying to bring you into that point where he wants to touch your life? Precious Jesus. Oh yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we need to believe today, right now, tonight, as we are here, that God has brought you for a purpose. Here, God has brought you to touch your life. I don't know how many people watching us right now live on the internet. I hope hundreds and thousands. I hope. I pray. But I want you to be attentive to what God is speaking to you Tonight, because you never know, God may brought you for such a time as this tonight for the same thing, so that you may receive your miracle, you receive the touch of God. Do you believe that God is personal? God is personal, He is your Father, you call Him Daddy, He loves you. God is personal, and if God is personal, He wants to touch your life personally. He cares about your situation. He cares about your finances. He cares about your future. He cares about your spiritual condition, physical. He cares about everything what he does. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will bless you. I will touch your life. Amen. Precious God. And I believe in that narrow path as God has brought us tonight is a special moment in our life. Special moment in our life. Hallelujah. Maybe you don't feel like, maybe sometimes we don't feel like that it is something that is happening. But I'm telling you that inner voice in your heart will speak to you and say yes Expect your miracle tonight. When I was going or walking toward, when we were driving in Orlando and we wanted to come and see that uh, Holy Land experience, I never thought, never thought that God will touch my life there. I was not even expecting because I just wanted to come and see the place. Being there for the first time, I really wanted to come and see the place. Amen. I never thought that God has chosen out of all my holidays, that whatever we were, this place to be a narrow place with me and God. Hallelujah. So God is not finished with you, friends. I want you to understand how personal God is. And I want you to understand that God has the power to touch your life. I want you to understand that Jesus is Lord and He is the Messiah and Savior. And that's the only way. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God can touch your children. 
Maybe you're watching right now and I, I sense it. That, uh, don't give up. Never give up. God can do all things and everything. Maybe it's tonight that God is going to touch your kids. That you've been praying for and asking for to touch their life and set them free. When we are frustrated. Sometimes when we are frustrated with things, that's when God comes in and does things on his own. Because I will never leave you nor forsake you, he said. Are you with me? He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Glory to God. It's so wonderful to be in the presence of God. It's so wonderful to be in that narrow path with God where God is going to touch your life. Precious Jesus. And He's going to do it. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. I think soon enough, I really believe, I really believe that soon enough, God is going to overturn the church. His church. He's going to do something different. Amen. That instead of being some kind of institution, we are going to be a place where people will find rest and interest and answers. Amen. For themselves. Don't you know that it has been for too long? That the religion took over and many others. And the doors were shut. Because people are afraid to come to church. They are afraid of, 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 of being religious. No, but God is free. Amen. God is free. God is going to open. God is going to overturn his church. God is going to do something with his church. That is going to be a place Of restoration for every nation. Amen. A powerful manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Honestly, I'm telling you, that's what it's going to be. Where we are going to meet God in that special narrow path. Where He's going to touch our lives. Where people are going to be hungry. Not just, well... Let me see what the Bible says. They will be hungry for the word of God. Awakened and hungry for everything what God says. Set free, delivered, blessed. Amen. You know what God said that in the wilderness, the Jewish people, they were for 40 years in the wilderness. And you know, some of them left when they were little. And the Bible says, the Bible says that even their shoes grew with their feet. Can you imagine five years old kid left Egypt? 40 years later he was 45. The difference in the size. It it grew because God took care of it. And the Bible says there was no one sick among them for 40 years. This is what the church is all about. This is what the people of God are all about. Amen. And God is going to bring His power back into our midst. Hallelujah. We will forget about our, our, our religious services, ceremonies, and all the traditions. You know, that freedom that God has given. The freedom and the Spirit is going to manifest in our life. And not only the people who are coming to church, they will be uh, uh, delivered actually and healed. But people who are on the streets that God concerned about. Are you with me? This is what God wants. This is what God wants. Glory to God. We've been teaching and preaching and bringing revelations and it was so wonderful and great. But yet God is going to bring us to that narrow path with Him. Back to where the power, the river flows. The river of the power of God flows. Amen. The river of the power of God flows. Because believers without being empowered of the Spirit of God are not real believers. Something has to happen. Amen. And it has to be God and God alone. It's by His might and by His hand. He has to do this. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Just remember one thing. If you're praying for somebody, I'll give you the worst case scenario. Worst case. If you're praying for somebody or if you're praying for something and you don't get an answer and you are frustrated and you're losing hope and faith, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Because your prayers are remembered in heaven. God knows. Hallelujah. It's going to come to pass anyway. Whether we believe it or not believe it anymore. It's in the hands of God. It's in the hands of God. I witnessed that myself. Praying for my father for 15 years. Nothing happened. I just left it alone. I quit. I said, Lord, I'm still praying. But I'm just praying with reminding you. Just to remind you that my dad needs to be saved. God says, just don't worry about this. And three months before he died, God saved his soul without me touching his life. Because God is faithful. It doesn't matter what you're going through. We are going to be ministered by Christ. Do you know Israel itself? The rebellion of Israel. All the things that has happened to Israel. The disbelief and everything else. Didn't turn God away from him. Did not turn God away from Israel at all. And he said he is going to visit them. Amen. Because he is God. He is a powerful and miraculous God. How can we lose hope? It's impossible. Amen. We cannot lose hope. We always believe that today, as the Bible says, today is the day of our salvation. People praying for the job so long nothing happens no work i know people calling me from different places because of television program and they say we're praying for a job we're praying for a job and we're praying for a job and seems like if you think about this you pray for a job for two three years how do you survive if there is no job but somehow god is keeping them but we're still praying for a job And then all of a sudden, God comes in and brings that job that's supposed to be there. Because He is God. He is miraculous. He is a God of miracles. Amen. And He can heal people. He can set them free. And He can do everything what He wants to do. And I want to believe God tonight that this is the night. For everyone who is here, everyone who is watching, everyone who came. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you have, what kind of problem it is. Amen. No, it doesn't really matter. We just believe God for everything He has for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I love ministering to people anywhere and everywhere because anytime you lay hands on somebody, <laughs> you bring in God and His power on their life. Did you know that? You bring God and His power on their life. 
as Jesus said, he didn't come to be ministered, he came to minister. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, the text that I was going to bring tonight was about John and James. When they came to Christ and they said, who is going to be sitting at your left, at your right hand? Who is going to be first? Well, Jesus said, even I didn't come to be ministered, but I came to minister. He says, those who be first shall be last. And those who, will, those who are last will be, shall be first. And what he really meant, he says, your life in me is empowered to do one thing so that you can minister. You can minister. What does it mean? You're allowing God. You, what does it mean? That God is ready to use you to touch somebody else's life. Never mind yourself. Never mind yourself. This is how it is. And I know that tonight God is going to do it. For you. Maybe even for me. And for those who are watching us on television. For those who are watching us on internet tonight. Glory to Jesus. I just know that God is going to do something powerful. You know that cancer is nothing for God. Cancer is nothing for God. There is a time and a point of time. When God comes to visit. And I know. And I know one thing, that when God is doing that, He says, ask, seek, and knock. Amen? And I will touch your life. Ask, seek, and knock. And I will touch your life. Glorious Jesus. Hallelujah. Can you imagine when God is bringing you to that narrow path with Him alone? And then you begin to ask, seek, and knock? He will do it. Son of David, have mercy on me. Remember that? Blind Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus. He was just passing by. It was that narrow path where just was there for that blind Bartimaeus. And he said, Son of David, have mercy on me. People tried to stop him, to shut him off. But Jesus said, bring him to me. And when they brought him, he says, what do you want me to do for you? He says that I may see. That I may see. Amen. Glory to God. That I may see. Touch my life, Lord Jesus. Ask, seek, and knock. Glory to God. And I know that God is going to do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, praise be to God. Praise be to God. The Lord is good and His love and mercy endures forever. I want to pray for you right now. I just want to believe God for your miracle. And uh, just let us stretch our faith to God today and just believe for everything that God has for us in store today. Father, in the name of Yeshua, Jesus, our Messiah, I pray for everyone who is watching. I just believe you, Lord Jesus, and I thank you, Lord God, for removing every sickness, every curse, every disease. Father God, I just pray that you will remove every evil spirit, Father God, that is attacking people's lives. Lord God, in whatever form it is, I just pray for healing. 
pray for healing, Lord Jesus. I want to thank you for your mercy and goodness. Bless, bless people today. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. Father, we just trust you and praise you for your goodness and mercy. Just touch people's lives. Let them be healed. Let them be set free. Let them know that you are God. Hallelujah, Lord. Whatever healing they need, I just pray. As I'm stretching hands toward them, Lord, I pray just touch their lives. Heal them and deliver them and set them free. Let your power be known to them. In the mighty name of Yeshua, Jesus, I give you the praise, my Lord. I give you the praise and I thank you for your goodness and mercy. In Yeshua's name, I pray. Amen and amen and amen. Well, friends, uh, I really sense in my spirit, also I know that people calling us and also we receiving these letters um, from people from um, oh, Edmonton. Uh, and they said, well, you came to Calgary, you came to Winnipeg, now why not Edmonton? Well, we are planning to come to Edmonton and we're planning our miracle meetings in Edmonton in the spring. But what we would like to see, uh, as you inviting us actually by letters and encouraging us to come, we would like to see you coming. So when we are there, Please don't miss this opportunity. This is why we uh, sometimes not coming back for a year or so, because uh, a lot of people were requesting us to come. But when we came, uh, those people did not really come. I know it's not a really good uh, um, testimony, but I'd, I'd like to be honest with you. If you want us to come to the city and you invite us to come, make sure you come in. Make sure you come into these meetings. Uh, I would love to come and reach out to every city, but um, we need to see you there. So we're planning to come to Edmonton. We're working on a venue right now, and we trust in God that God will open the door, and we will let you know what month in the spring we are going to come to Edmonton. And I would love to see uh, the place filled up. I would love to see the place filled up because when people are coming, God is ready to heal. God is ready to do things. Amen. And, you know, um, if there is nobody there, God has no one to heal and to touch. But I believe that you will come and God will bless you. And we are going to be blessed. And we will know that we didn't, didn't come for nothing. Amen. So let us believe God. And, uh, well, you have to encourage me as well. Make sure that you're going to come and let me know if you are willing uh, for us to come to Edmonton. Write us a letter. Say, yes, we will be there. Let's do it together. Let's bring this together and we will come. Amen. So is every other city. I would love to come back to every other city, but I would love to hear from you also um, and say, well, at least that encouragement card or whatever you can do, say, yes, we will we are waiting for you. We're looking forward to see you in our city. Then we will pray and decide where to go. So thank you so much for watching us. And uh, thank you so much for your support. We really appreciate your support. We really appreciate your help. And many of you doing your best. And we really thankful for everything you do. Remember about uh, Vancouver and um, uh, Winnipeg, Joy TV and Hope TV. We need 10 people with $25 a month to sign up from each city in, in order for us to be on those stations at least once a week. So we need to hear from you. And if we will, we will uh, bring an additional program in for Joy TV and Hope TV so that you can watch us in Winnipeg and Vancouver in the better timing. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for responding. Give us a call if you need an additional prayer. Give us a call and God is going to bless you and touch your life. I'm sure. Thank you so much. God bless you. Shalom to you. And we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.
House of David Jewish Messianic Ministry is produced and sponsored by viewers like you. We appreciate your support, which is allowing us to continue to broadcast our programming. Thank you, and God bless you. Shalom.